Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you how to draw and paint in Photoshop. So we're going to take this reference photos of peppers, which I have provided for you on Schoology, and then we're going to step by step go through and hand draw them, shade them, and make them look like a realistic drawing in Photoshop. So this takes a lot of steps and I'm slowly going to go through them for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our lasso tool, the magnetic lasso tool, and we're going to trace the front red pepper body right here. So begin by clicking and letting go and then slowly dragging around. Now see here how it jumped into my highlight? I don't want that. So I'm going to hit the backspace key. And then I'm going to have to click to kind of tell it where to go because it's going to want to grab that shadow below it as well. So remember, the lasso tool is great when colors don't match. But if things start to match, it may not go where you want it. So you just click to tell it where to go, backspace if needed, and then stop and start at the same spot so you get those dancing ants. Now, I have this highlighted. I'm going to come to the bottom of my layers panel, add a new layer take my eyedropper, pick up this general red color, not the highlights, not the shadows, the basic red in the middle, and I'm going to pick up that color. I'm going to take my paint bucket. I'm going to double check, make sure I have a new layer, and then I'm going to paint inside of it. So now I have a painted copy that I can work from. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this beautiful copy I just made, and I'm going to add another layer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to use my eyedropper to pick up all of these shadow values, all the darker values that I see, and I'm going to paint them on. Notice I still have my selection here. You can see it's a little wonky down here. That's fine. We will we'll fix it later. Not a big deal. So. I'm going to take my eyedropper, I'm going to pick up this shadow that I see over here, and I'm going to double check and make sure, my layers ran away, make sure I'm on my new layer. So I'm on my new layer, drag my navigator out of the way, and I'm going to take my paintbrush, and I want it to be a soft round brush, so under your general brushes, you can get the soft round brush, I'm going to make sure it's not too big. That's better. I'm going to make the opacity 100%. And I'm going to paint right on top of where that dark value is. Now, the more realistic your drawing is, the more, real, the more colors you pick up along the way. Because there's a lot of subtle changes in value around the pepper. So you don't want to pick one dark and use it for the entire pepper. You want to make sure you're going around and picking up all the different shadow variations that you see. So I went ahead and did this step so that I can make this tutorial go a little bit faster. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to that one so you can see what I've got. Okay, so as I said, I went ahead and jumped ahead on this step so that I can make this tutorial go a little bit faster. So here are all the shadow, oops, all the shadow values I picked up for my pepper and painted on. And notice I still have my selection here. The next step is to go through and pick up all the highlight values. So you can see I've got three layers in a row here. I started by outlining my pepper, filling it in solid, added a layer above it, picked up all my shadows, added a layer above that, picked up all my highlights. So now it's already starting to look a lot like the pepper image, just a very simplified version of it. So what I want to do is I want to go through and start to smudge these two top layers, my highlight and my shadow. And then I'm going to merge the three together and do some more smudging and a little dodging and burning. And pretty soon it's going to look very much like my pepper. The problem is I can't see my pepper. I'm blocking it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all three layers. So I just click the top layer, hold shift, click on the last layer that I need. and go select my top left move tool. 
I'm going to click on my selection and move it. See how these three layers are still separate, but they move together because I use shift to highlight them and then scooted them over. So now I can click just on my highlight layer. And now I'm going to go use a new tool that I don't believe we've used in class yet. This is the smudge tool. Typically it defaults to the blur tool, which looks like a raindrop and it lives underneath the eraser tool. But if you click and hold, you can get the smudge tool. I call it the finger. And then, oh, my, my brush is huge. From the top toolbar, you can change the size of your brush so it's not ginormous like mine just was. And you can change the strength of it. I usually start somewhere in the 20s and then go up higher or lower from there. So what I want to do is focus on just my highlights. And I am just clicking and dragging with my mouse. And you can see I'm kind of going different directions. And it's starting to move those painted values around. So I'm going to make it a little bit stronger. Like I said, I start in the 20s and then I go higher or lower from there. So I'm just kind of clicking, holding, moving left to right and up and down to try to hit these values that I see over here in the photo of my pepper. Because here I have, you know, very linear lines that I've, I've painted on. But here you can see them going the opposite direction. So I'm moving them left to right top to bottom to more realistically blend them in to match my reference image. So I'm going to do that for my highlights and then I'm also going to do it for my shaded values on the back layer. So again, you can change your strength, you can change the size of your brush. You can see I just made my brush really big so it's blending a lot more quickly now. You get more tight control when it's a smaller brush and it's a little bit looser when it's a wider brush. And because my darker values wrap tighter around the pepper, I can be looser. Whereas when it comes to the highlights, if I use this big brush, see how that just kind of faded away and disappeared? that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to lower my size and be more methodical about what I'm doing. Now I already did this step. Jump ahead here. And I already blurred everything. So I went ahead and jumped forward again. So here you can see I've gone through and I've blurred the highlights. I've blurred the shadows. I still have my solid red sitting behind it. Now the next step is to merge those layers together. So you just shift highlight those three, three layers and you can go control E and get a smushed version of them. And then you can take that smushed version, which I happen to have right here, and you can continue to dodge and burn and smudge now that the three of them are flattened together. So now I have all three layers, the highlights, the shadows, and the solid red all flattened together. So now, making sure that it's still highlighted with my dancing ants, I can go through and smudge if I have some, some edges that need more smudging. I can go in with my dodge tool if I need to make some areas brighter. And I can go in with my burn tool if I have some areas I need to make darker. So once you get it looking the way you want to, you're going to line it up on top of the pepper photo right where it was. And you're going to repeat those steps to do the top. So see, I went and I took my lasso tool and I traced the top stem and then I moved it out of the way. And instead of putting all of the paint on top of it with this one, I just used my dodge and burn tool. So you can see clearly here, it's darker right there and it's darker on that base. Let me zoom in so it's easier to see. So I just took my navigator keeps popping off. Make sure I'm on the right one. Okay, so I just took my 
burn tool. You see how it's getting darker down here? And I just went through and burned my solid painted stem. Now you do have to be conscious of how big or how small it is. And you can see I'm really circling over that edge to match that value that I see there. And then I'm curving underneath here because I can see there's a highlight around here. So I'm curving here and leaving an, a blank area for that highlight. And then you can kind of see these black lines running through here. So I can start to drag my mouse back and forth. And I may want to make my exposure higher so it doesn't take me an entire class period to do this. And I'm just going to start dragging my lines across it. So you can see it's already starting to have some more depth to it. It's starting to look more 3D. And all I did with this one is I traced it with the lasso tool, painted it in with my paint bucket, and then I started burning. Now I'm going to flip to my dodge tool Remember, you always have to pay attention to what range you're in. You want the range to match match where you are. So I'm going to start with mid-tones and see what that does. Yep, mid-tones makes it brighter. So I am just going through with my dodge tool and making some things brighter, giving it some more definition. I may want to go through and change to a highlight or maybe I want to try a shadow. It's one of those things I always play around with until it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. And I may decide, you know what, that looks really nice, but I really want some of that yellow green in there. Take your eyedropper, pick some up, go get a teeny tiny paintbrush. Ugh. You ever have one of those days where the computer just doesn't do what you want. That's my day today. So now I'm just going to go pop some of those colors in there. And now I'm going to take my smudge tool and I'm going to carefully smudge those colors in. I say carefully because I don't have this selected with my magic wand, which means if I get outside the lines, it's going to look really bad. So there you go. So I have a pretty decent stem going and all I did was paint it solid and then dodge and burn it. So that's one pepper. So I only have a few minutes left before my tutorial time runs out. So I'm going to quickly walk you through the last two peppers. So when it comes time to do this pepper, you want to draw straight across. So when you trace it with your lasso tool and you go to trace the edges, go right across the pepper in the front. Why would you go across the pepper in the front? Because you can drag this middle pepper underneath the front pepper. And now that whole, that whole section is blocked out. So it's really easy to do. And then same thing for the stem that you did here, you'll just go through and trace your stem and then you'll do this back pepper last. So I traced my back pepper, traced my back pepper top, and then you go through and again, you're going to add layers for shadows, layers for highlight, you're going to smudge and then merge your three layers together, do some more smudging, some dodging and burning, and by the time you're done, you'll have three realistically drawn peppers. And then I used the copy paste to put a reflection underneath it. And I used my, my filter blur Gaussian blur to make it softer, made it really opaque for my layers panel, put a gradient behind it, added a frame from a picture I found online and signed it. And that is it, my friends. You've drawn your own peppers.